Sir, you're charged with especially aggravated kidnapping. You're also charged with aggravated assault. And you're charged with theft of a firearm worth less than $2,500. You're talking about stuff that is not relevant. Hello and welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the Recovery Addict, and boy do I have a case for you today. Why is the dog Whoa. chewing on this guy? I think they have got the wrong guy they there. Got the wrong guy, and the dog was, was biting him. He roughing him up quite a bit. There's a lawsuit. Nine out of ten judges prefer watching the Recovery Addict live stream in their courtroom. The fireworks are not done. No, we're doing commentary on the case. Is that correct? Not him, he's on the commentary. Literally not true. Oh. I didn't ask you to interrupt me. All right. What what a fabulous lunch. What a fabulous lunch. I, I can tell you nap time in about 30 minutes is going to be delicious. It's going to be wonderful. I'm not going to I'm gonna be gone. I'll be in the land of sweet dreams here soon. Uh, Welcome back from lunch. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the Recovery Addicts. Thank you very much for being here. Um, let's see, I just got kicked out to, to Ian's waiting room. That's weird. I, I did just set up the link for Ian's live stream for tonight. He's got a, he's got a recap that starts at 7.30, and I didn't want to forget it. So, uh, let's see, 30 minutes? Yeah, I think 30 minutes is when the... When the uh, does does uh, rotisserie chicken have tryptophan in it? Is it the uh, the sleep aid that, that's found in turkey? No, because I I uh, I did a I did a number on that rotisserie chicken, and it looks uh, it's cleaner picked than than maybe a, a small school school of piranhas might might make it. And it was delicious. It was so good. And then of course I had to have a, a Sam's Club um, muffin, blueberry, and uh, and yeah. So uh, I I did that. So that's lunch, between the sugar from the blueberry muffin and the uh, all the, uh, the delicious rotisserie chicken. Uh, nap time coming soon. All right, chats can't be seen yet. I will put them on the screen right now. Britt Bottoms and Will. First of all, we're going to celebrate uh, Jill Ballard, who once again I think this is the second time within. Well, it's first time this month because we're in a new month, but the second time within about a week, Jill, that you've won the internet. Congratulations! You went. Uh, you had a long stint with where I thought that the recidivism rate was going to be very low for you. But now you have shown that you are truly a repeat offender. Uh, you're back in, in chat first with the V for victory or villain. I, I don't know what the V is for, but uh, here, there you are. We're going to go ahead and send it to you with internet ownership once again and make sure that all the repair work on the internet goes to you. Everyone got kicked to Runkle. I don't, I just, I just barely... Oh, you know what? That this is this is interesting. This is something I did not know. Let's see. Let's see the details. Okay, cancel. Edit. Customization. Yeah, but it still shows I had set up to to link to his when I next go live, but because I was not live yet, some of you got kicked right away. Hmm. Next next time I know. I, I won't do that. I don't want I don't want anyone to feel like they've been kicked out and not feel wanted here. Welcome, welcome. Hope you had a fantastic lunch. I'm missing my water. I know we have water, but I'm missing it. Uh, let's see. Uh, she's gone mad. Twenty seven says Happy Friday, RA. Happy two months to me as well. She's gone mad. Uh, welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. Would not be the same without you. Happy two months. You've got that green courthouse, which means you've started your third month. Your third month. My 13-year-old kitty is watching you. I just went out and uh, I, I, had not, I did not pet the cat yesterday. Kiki, uh, Kiki did not uh, see me at all yesterday. And so I went out today and the kids were playing with the cat with a little, a little ball on a, a, a little stretchy cord with the feathers attached. And he just goes nuts for that. And there he's like mid-pounce. And I'm like, Kiki? And he's like, I'm not a camel. Contorts himself in the air and just like runs to me. Because he thought I had like tuna fish or something delicious for him, which I did not, and and then he acted like I didn't exist. So there you go. That's that's how it is. That's how that's our relationship in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to study the trial notes on the back of his eyelids. Uh -huh. Yes, I am. I'm going to study study the. Well, I I gently snore, which helps me focus. 
So we'll we'll do that. We do have. Is that somebody just sent me a video of roaches fighting? Mm -hmm. I don't know who won. I don't know who won. Let's see. I have to find better things to say. <laughs> let's catch that. Uh, let's see. We see. I blame Ivan. Cat snubbed Ra. Yes, it did. The cats do that. I mean, it's uh, my cat particularly does Are that. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? I'll tell you what, my cat did. My cat is not the smartest cat, and I'm not sure if, if this is like a, a trait that all cats share, um, but it commonly will fall off things that it jumps up onto. And my wife was running to the store to get groceries. And it saw that they were getting in the car, and it we're went immediately ran. That is not no, this is relevant. We'll get there. Because we're, he's the guy. Right. It ran behind the car and laid down behind the tire. When are we and it was like batting life, the though? tire with its paw, like bring it. And my wife, not to be pushed around by a cat, started the engine, which was all the cat. cat took, and it was like a bullet. It was like, it was gone. It was out of there. But he thought he thought it could block the path and keep the family here. Nope. My wife played the trump card with the Don't miss the forest for the trees. Uh, Ronnie Cambry, welcome to the gallery. Did I say that right, Ronnie? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for your second month of support there. And uh, Michelle M, happy Friday, Somebody everyone. Thanks for the coverage. Video of roaches fighting. Yeah. I don't know who won. Mm. Uh, thanks for the coverage on high chat. Five months now. Yay, Michelle. That's wonderful. Love it. Next month, you get what a yellow courthouse. That's going to be neat. I have the hiccups now, and I, I don't know why, but I do. I also have noticed that my chat my chat tool is broken. Um, it's uh, like it links, it, it puts this in the fan funding page, which is where typically a message, a, an anniversary message or a super chat or a super sticker would go or gifted memberships. Uh, Keshet, love your love your comment. I'm not sure why it's broken on this end. And usually when that happens, the other... The zombie apocalypse may be upon us. It may be upon us. These sounds will go quiet here in a, little, in a little while when you guys are get it out of your system. Um, but it, shortly, I'm my live chat will stop and I'll have to reboot everything. So we'll see. But I'm dying here. It's are like we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? Like ball or something. Uh, I have a bottom heavy cat who falls off things he jumps on. My cat is, I don't, I wouldn't not say my cat is fat. Um, but it's also not lean. It's a, it's a healthy cat. All right. We are going to, Deer Park Water is needed. Uh, please, yes, Alex, send, send help. We're having some tech issues this afternoon. We are, but we're, we're not going to miss court. We are, we will be back. Let's see where are we at. We're super, super source right here. I need to go ahead and add the Alec Baldwin counter. There we go. So we do have we do have the video from the courtroom. We'll be taking that live. No sound yet, but hopefully that'll change shortly. I'll turn that down just a titch. It seems a little hot. Uh, also, something that's not working, the ticker. My my ticker's broken on, on my counter. So when I go from 375 Are to 376, you should be able to hear a click. Let's listen. It's just not happening. I'm not Default a camel. Default sounds. Oh, how about this? Will this work? 375. There you go. Is that... That's one you can't miss. Let me turn the volume down a little bit because that's super loud. 376. Lunch, now, now no one's going to... No one's going to doubt that, that I've clicked the button. 375. Bring the jury. I don't know. I don't know why the ticks aren't working, but uh, it's a little too loud. I turned it off. It's it's too much. It would be interruptive. It would be disruptive. Does your cat have front There's claws? Yes, very long, like uh, dragon claws. Have them like just someone with more experience. Huge. Still need to know who's in charge of the mule on the set. A donkey. Donkey, Paul. No mule. This was a full-on donkey. <laughs> Ooh. Delivery has arrived. Deer Park Water is here. 
the day is saved. Thank you, little Larry. Appreciate that. I have a I have a tech question for those who who know, and I, I realize I'm I'm a very much an Apple guy. Um, I was kicked back, taking it easy. I had some Apple ear pods that came with my phone. I had like a you get free ear pods when I bought my phone. It was a cool deal, and uh, they somebody were the, just sent me a video of roaches fighting. I don't know who won. Know who won. How does he do that? <laughs> I'm gonna turn these down. I can't get a word in edgewise, you guys. Uh, they were the they were the nice the AirPod You're Pro. You're talking about stuff that is not relevant. And uh, scratch all that. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> I apologize. You guys are terrible. Uh, anyway, I I disconnected them from my phone and I gave them to my daughter to use with her her Kindle so she can have um, have books read to her, um, so she can listen to audiobooks on that. And and she does not remember where she put them. And now that I've disconnected it from my phone, is there any way to like find them again, like missing, or do they have to be linked to an account? Maybe upon us. All right, the clicker like quit after you did the boop sound the other day. Oh, it thought it thought I was competing for the little sound effects. But where are the, where are the voices coming from? Whose voices? Sin, uh, during the breaks at times like this, I do turn up the sound effects. Any anytime you see commands like this one here from Megan, um, or oops, or or AT and T, which is a zombie apocalypse uh, command, or correct, all these are are commands that uh, that are triggered by you. The viewers, uh, we we only trigger that when we're not in court session. We we try to uh, to keep it very quiet are so we can focus on the the hearing. But uh, these commands are little sound bites from trials we followed, from little funny moments on the show, um, a couple from a movie How or two, <laughs> I think. But uh, they're they're all triggered by you guys. So every time you hear like I'm, I'm touching nothing, I'm not I'm not I'm not just over here playing with a soundboard. I can trigger them. I can. I can say scratch all that. Oh, that was terrible. I apologize. There's a lawsuit. Yeah, there's there's a lawsuit. That was you guys, but yeah, the commands are yours and they're fun. When we're when we're not in court, uh, we I'm use them a, a lot, and sometimes we even have them running during the podcast and things like that. Did you do a boop command? Uh, I have not. I have not done a boop command. It, it takes like twenty minutes for me to build a new command. Need to be attached to Apple ID. Can try locating from any device. The zombie apocalypse may be upon us. So yeah, I think they're gone forever. I don't know where they went. She likes to hide things occasionally so her uh, siblings don't find them. And sometimes she hides them too well. Somebody just sent me a video of roaches fighting. I don't know who won. I'm not a camel. Yeah, I tried to find my device and it wasn't on the list. I'm pretty sure I cleared it off because I kept getting notifications. I even turned off the notifications because it was saying a device <laughs> that you don't own is traveling with you because she's always like in the car with us going somewhere. She has her he earbuds. Um, and it's like the same alarm where if somebody had planted like a, an Apple AirTag near you, it would tell you that it was there. Because and I'm like, disregard these in, all, in the future. So now I get no commands whatsoever. All right, we are just a I'm few minutes away from court starting. And when we start, let's see, let's see here. Let me check my notes to see where we are Wrangler. as far as witnesses go. I think we've got Wyatt Mortensen. He was the Wrangler and stuntman. He's done. We should have a new, a new witness up, right? The oh, Wrangler is out, so we're, we're on to the next witness. We don't know who it is yet. All right, uh, so many, so many commands in chat. I'm gonna just. I'm just slowly turning the volume down until you guys realize that there's no more sound anymore. Ivy Berlin, welcome to the gallery. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Love the yellow courthouse. And uh, and thanks for the update on on when the clicker quit. I I don't know why the boop would have quit then. I might have to power cycle my my iPad. We've got sound effects turned on from from court, so if something happens, you're going to see. Let me let me just show you really quickly. The iPad is uh, I'm not sure about the angle is there. There's a good angle. You can see the hole in the iPad, right? This on this this side over here, that hole should not be there. <laughs> that, that glass should be nice and level all the way across. And there's a spider web and a lot of fingerprints. Well, I should probably send this off to the lab to get it analyzed, but. I just don't know where the, the ticker sound went. 
I'm not sure if I want to turn it off or turn it back on again because I'm not sure if I have to swipe anywhere on the broken part where all the glass is falling out. That would be bad. Go we'll troubleshoot it. Maybe we can. Maybe I can steal one of Mrs. Ra's school iPads and use that for the ticker. When are we going to break for lunch, Judge? Uh, Mama Betts, welcome to the gallery. Thank you so much, Mama Betts. Oh, well, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Today is a share a smile day. It's also, I believe, it's. Uh, is it like Women's History Month or something like that? Somebody tell me if if you know. I think the whole month, all of March, is is Women's History Month. So, we might have to follow some uh, some great judges like uh, I don't know Judge Boyd, Judge Stephanie Boyd. Uh, Nose Rosie, look at my last comment. Where is your last comment? I'm looking up there, it is. Do you think the trial will go longer the next Friday? Will state close today? I think we, we have a small chance of the state closing today. Labman says turn it off and on again. Okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Ready? We're going we're gonna to put... First, let's go here. The, the iPad is at the little bo bottom right-hand corner. I don't, I don't even know the password to unlock this. So we're going to go ahead and, and turn it off. still not hearing it. Let's see, is it turned on? Yes. None of the sounds are working. I don't know why. We'll, we'll figure that out at another time. I don't want to power it all the way off. I, I honestly, I don't know how to <laughs> motion to get our new iPad. I have new iPads. They're they're used for school for the kids, um, so that's that's where they are. I have plenty of tech. I really do. I I I can't justify a new iPad. If you have insurance on your device, maybe your carrier will replace. Pam. Uh, I have all the legal insurance required. Oh, we have some sound. We have some sound. At least we have some action. We're waiting for sound. No audio yet. Don't know who this is. Divine Creations by Melanie, gifted a membership. Thank you, Melanie. Appreciate that. Bring the jury. Okay, we're waiting still. I don't think the judge is there. No sound. I, I'm I'm seeing no sound on any of the any of the feeds that we're monitoring, and we are monitoring all the feeds. <laughs> Busted. Busted. You guys, I got caught. Look at the trash all over the prosecutor's desk. It looks like they just had like a, a rowdy lunch and just left everything laying out. Just open water bottles, lids off the water bottles, it looks like. Do you see that? Oh, no, their, their lids are on. Never mind. I take that back. All right. Everyone's standing for looking towards the jury. So jury should be coming in. We might have the judge on the bench and just waiting to get audio any second now. That'll be good. Okay, hold on, hold on. We need to uh, do a quick little switch here. Scratch all that. Oh, that was terrible. I apologize. Okay. Scratch. 
Okay. I'm going to just work on the sink just a tiny bit. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Uh, have a seat. Talk into the microphone. Ma'am, go ahead and state your full name for the record. My name is Sherilyn Schaefer. Ms. Schaefer, how are you currently employed? I am employed as an EMT in the film industry, a medic. Can you just explain to the jury the situation, the, the connection between movie sets and medics? Is a medic always on a movie set, and if so, why? Usually, if it's a union show, a medic is always on set um, for the potential that there could be something dangerous that happens. Um, but 99% of the time, we are in charge of making sure the actors and not necessarily the actors, but the crew um, have sunscreen, bug spray, Advil, electrolytes. Uh, if it's hot out, we make sure everyone stays hydrated. If it's cold, we hand out hot hands. Um, that's the majority of it. If somebody gets a splinter or a cut, we take care of those as well. Um, if somebody gets injured enough that they need to go to get stitches or be seen, we bandage them up, we send them off. Um, and then we are in charge of the um, the paperwork that goes with the production to make sure that the uh, injury can be uh, to go through workers comp so that it's not coming out of the the crew or whoever's um, insurance. Okay. Um, how long have you worked generally in the film industry? Um, I started in the film industry in 2008. Or, I'm sorry, 2009. Okay. And um, how long have you worked as a medic in the film industry? Since 2014. And can you summarize for the jury what your uh, medical training consists allowed you to be qualified for this position? <clears throat> I'm a licensed EMT. All right. <laughs> that's the shortest. Um, that's the shortest CV I've ever heard in trial. Ms. Schaefer. Approximately, do, since 2009, if you can guesstimate for us approximately how many uh, films have you worked on? Uh, film and TV? Sure. Um, 40 plus. Okay, and of those, can you guesstimate for us again approximately how many had real firearms and an armor on set? Maybe 10, 12. Um, was the handling of firearms by the armor on the set of rust different than what you were used to? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what you noticed, how you thought it was different? I noticed uh, the armorer on rust did not um, secure the weapons as a normal armorer would, or an armorer on productions I've worked on before would. Normally, um, the weapon would be secured until it was time for the actor or stunt actor to need it. Um, and then the armorer would go to their generally a locked cabinet, um, grab the weapon, um, take it to the actor or stunt actor. Uh, with the first AD, sometimes a stunt coordinator, depending on who's who's there, open the weapon, empty it um, if it needs to be emptied. Show the actor uh, or stunt actor the the um, the type of of bullet, I guess you would call it, that's going to be in the gun. Show it that it's not real, um, and then or essentially check it in front of the actor and the first AD to make sure that everyone's uh, comfortable with it. Uh, and then hand it over to that performer um, for the shot, for whatever shot they are shooting. 
And just to be clear, what you just described was what you are accustomed to. That is correct. Uh, can you explain to the jury uh, what, uh, how, how that procedure worked on the set of rust? Um, a lot of times um, when I would notice, I would notice our armorer um, hand the guns over to the actors, sometimes checking them, sometimes not. Um, generally, once the scene is over, you would remove the weapon. Um, the armorer would remove the weapon from the actor and resecure it until it is needed again. Uh, on rust, that did not happen um, a good majority of the time. The actor still remained uh, in possession of the weapon, whether it was in their holster or in their hands. And um, can you kind of explain to the jurors how long the actors would be left with the weapons in their possession uh, after the scene and maybe discuss a little bit about how long it takes to do a turnaround. Okay. There were, um, there were a few times where you know it, they would have the, the weapon for a, a minute or two or so after uh, we had cut, but then there would be other times where we would be turning around and, and that's where the camera position changes. Like if we're looking at somebody and we turn around, then we're going to look the other direction at the actor. Um, that can take, uh, depending on all the moving parts, 20, 30 minutes, um, where they would still be in possession of the weapon. And, and I just want to be clear, did you testify that you saw uh, Ms. Gutierrez provide actors with weapons without conducting a safety check? That is correct. Did you ever have an occasion to notice uh, whether or not any of the actors on the set of the movie did their own safety checks? There were some times that the, um, the actors would, would open their weapons and look, you know, see either while it was being reloaded or not, um, looking at, opening it up and looking at it. And generally on a film set, you would not do that without the armorer present in front of you. Um, and if you did, then the armorer would need to be called back to, ch to recheck that weapon in front of you. Um, so when the actors would do their own safety checks, was Ms. Gutierrez uh, participating in that? Uh, sometimes she was near, sometimes she was, and I don't recall exactly all the time. Uh, I didn't notice a lot, but there were some times where she could have been close by or not, but she was not directly in front of the actor. Okay. Um, and it wasn't every actor. It was, you know, just a couple here and there. Okay. Um, did you ever take note of how Ms. Gutierrez would load ammunition into her fanny pack? Yes. Yes. And we get to approach and talk about how she would load ammunition into her pockets, pocket filing system, her, her belt level pouch pocket filing system. It's got to be a better word than fanny pack. Notice that the ones that either sued or made a deal seem to have more emotion than any other witnesses. A little bit of leading, leading, leading. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, do you recall the question? Could you repeat it again, please? Did you ever take note of how Ms. Gutierrez would uh, transfer ammunition from uh, boxes to her fanny pack? Yes, <clears throat> there was one occasion that I did see that. Uh, can you describe what you saw for the jury? So the the there would be um, the boxes that had the st a styrofoam with um, the ammunition inside of it. Um, and there were times I would see her take, or this one time, I saw her take the box and kind of tip it a little bit and use her fingers to put some in and then hand it back, I believe, to um, Miss Zachary uh, and get another box and do the same thing, put more in, put it back, get another box, put more in, put it back. So we're mixing multiple rounds inside of, of different, and again, I don't know what they were, um, but mixing different rounds for different weapons. There were some short ones, some long ones. 
So during this um, instance where you saw uh, Ms. Gutierrez load the fanny pack directly from the boxes, if you recall, would she take the time to check every round to make sure that it was inert? No. All right. Um, Welcome, Natalie. Great to have you as a member. Make sure you take a seat like this. Let's get reserved seating. In your experience in the film industry, um, does the armor always stay with the firearm? Yes. Or within proximity, be able to visually see. You mean when the actor has the, the weapon? Correct. Yeah, to be able to visually see. Um, was that the case on the set of Rust? No, not always. Um, I'm going to shift gears and direct your attention to October 21st of 2021. Uh, if you can just kind of walk us through, walk the jury through um, how that day went and what you recall, you can start before the lunch hour and then we'll kind of move through it, okay? Okay. Um, about 6, 6.30 was my call time that morning, and that's what time I, uh, that I needed to be on set. Um, I arrived on set. Um, I, well, I arrived to base camp first, grabbed breakfast. I, I don't remember if we had a COVID test that day or not, but then I went up to set. Um, and I have, um, I have a trauma bag that I take with me, and I have a, a box and a stand that has, inside the box will have the... the um, emergency, it will have tissue, it'll have cough drops, it'll have those sorts of things that a crew member might want, as well as containers of um, sunscreen and, and bug spray because at that time we had the sun and bugs. Um, so I went and I set my stuff down at the middle of the town and um, on the radio there was a little bit of noise about the camera department being behind schedule um, and I had asked somebody, I'm not sure who, one of our, um, either our, one of our other ADs or one of our PAs on set, a production assistants on set, I had asked what was going on and they had said that the camera department uh, was not ready to go um, and wouldn't be ready to go on time. Um, I generally am friends with the majority of everybody on set, I've worked with everybody a lot and so I went over to where the camera truck was to kind of see if I could see what was going on or talk to anybody about what was going on because I knew that they had had some issues with the production. And um, I noticed that they were packing up all their equipment. Um, and, um, you know, so I watched them do that for a little while, but then I had to go back to setting everything else up that I had to set up. And uh, at some point in time, um, our first AD, uh, Dave Halls, had called a, um, for a safety meeting that morning, um, which was rare. Um, and it was more of a meeting to kind of get the crew back together again, because we were all kind of spread out and, and trying to figure out what was going on that morning. And, um, and so he, he um, you know, in the safety meeting, he just said that we were gonna Objection. have a... Um, I, I'm assuming, okay, okay sorry. I can say what it is. Okay, so all the objections have to be walked up to the bench and talked about there. You can't even tell you tell say openly in court what the objection is. So whether it's hearsay, um, whether it's uh, leading, whether it's um, non-responsive, I mean it could, it could be anything, and it's it's going to be hearsay here. But uh, they all have to go up to the judge. She is done done with the arguments in front of the jury. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, without saying what anyone said, can you summarize for the jury what your understanding was of the purpose for that meeting? The purpose of that meeting was to um, get the crew back together as we were scattered um, to try to get the, the day started. We were already so far behind with the camera crew leaving. And um, when when scenes are being filmed on the set, are you present every time a scene is being filmed? 95% of the time, unless okay. I need to use the restroom or, 
or something. Okay. Um, uh, were scenes being filmed that morning before lunch? Yes. And were you present for those? Yes. Uh, do you recall uh, if any of those scenes uh, involved the use of firearms? I'm not sure about the first scene. I, I don't remember what we shot. The second part was before lunch, right after we moved up to the church. We had a scene. Um, I'd, I'd like to say that it used weapons. I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, did you, during that scene, did you see any of the uh, handoff of the weapon from the armor to the actor? I did not. Okay. Um, and then at some point, do you go to lunch? Yes. Um, and when lunch is over, tell us what happens. After lunch, um, um, I had gotten a ride up to set from our base camp, which was just a few minutes away uh, down the road. And um, I had walked from where they drop us off up to where the church is and um, was waiting for the rest of the crew and the rest of the departments to get to set as well. Uh, and so I sat down on the, the end of a tailgate that was nearby. I believe it was electric truck, but I'm not positive. Okay. Tell us what happened after that. Sorry. It's okay. Take your time. I was talking to whoever was sitting next to me. Uh, maybe a locations person. I don't remember. And the sound of a gun went off, um, or I heard the sound of a gun. And I looked over at who was sitting next to me, and I said, uh, are we rehearsing? Because I didn't know that we were back in at that point, and I hadn't heard anything on the radio about us being back in and uh, from lunch. And I said, I didn't hear anybody call, you know, fire in the hole, or, or normally, like you would hear, the armorer would say, um, quarter load, half load, full load, whatever type of ammunition that they are shooting. Uh, and none of that was said. So as soon as I said that, I grabbed the bag, my bag, my normal bag, and I ran into towards the church. I wasn't very far from it. And at that, as I was approaching the door, I heard um, medic emergency come over the radio. And, and are you the only medic on set? I am. Okay. So when you heard medic emergency on the radio, did that information tell you where to go? No. Um, How did you did know that. where to go? I was there. I was sitting, I was sitting there uh, outside the church waiting. Okay. Understood. Please proceed. Um, so I got to the door and um, one of the things that we are taught in, in EM, when you're becoming an EMT is your scene needs to be safe before you uh, go into it. So I, I stood at the door and I looked around to see what was happening and I asked what happened and somebody said, um, <clears throat> Helena was shot or the gun went off, some, something to that effect. And I looked down at Helena who had been sitting at that point um, to my right and, and Joel was on the left um, um, in, in obvious pain. Uh, and, and Alec Baldwin was at the back of the church from me, the opposite end of the church from me. Um, and then um, I looked down at Helena again, and as I started going towards her, I, I believe it was um, our camera operator, Reed, had asked uh, her if she could feel her legs. And uh, for one, I believe she said yes. For the other one, um, she said no. And so I knew that there was some sort of spinal injury at that point. I, um, as I was going towards her, I could see the blood um, dropping, dripping from, the, from her back onto the church floor. Um, was she still seated at this point, or was she... She was leaning uh, kind of on a pew. Okay. Um, and um, in my regular, my smaller bag, I carry, sh I carry trauma shears, and, um, and so I started cutting up the back of her jacket uh, to try to find where she was bleeding from. And um, at some point in time, uh, I believe it was Ann Shim, our second second AD, asked me if there's anything that I needed or she could do for me. And I, or, or it's, before that, I'm sorry, I had I called out on the radio for somebody to call 911. We would need an ambulance. And Ann then asked me um, if I needed anything, and I asked her to get me my my bigger trauma bag because that's where I keep my trauma-related um, items. 
and she did, and I asked her to also call Matt Hemmer, um, who was one of our electricians. I asked him, her to call him because he had some previous um, military experience medically, and, and he was one of the people I knew I could get up there to help me. Being the only medic and two patients is not easy. And so I had him just take over um, for Joel while I, I tended to Helena. And so if you can kind of explain to us um, what kind of treatment you attempted um, uh, with regard to Miss Hutchins. One more week. When I cut up um, the front of her, or the back of her jacket, I'm sorry, um, I grabbed some gauze and I put it on the, the one hole that I could find at that point. And I asked, um, at that point, I believe it was Reed was next to me. I gave him a glove and I asked him to hold that gauze there. And, um, and, and sometime in the meantime, we had moved the pews or the guys had moved the pews away and laid her down. Um, and I went to the front of her to cut up the front of her shirt, uh, to the chest area to try to find um, the other hole. Knowing that um, Joel had been shot, it, I knew that it was a through and through or in one side out the other. You already suspected that it was a through and through? Yes, because okay. Joel was, Joel, because of the way that Joel was um, screaming in pain, I knew he had likely um, whatever had gone through her had gone into him as well. Okay, please proceed. Um, so I cut up the front and I could not find an entrance wound and so I had to um, keep looking until I found the, or the other wound. I didn't know what was entrance and what was exit at that point. Um, and when I did I found, I grabbed another um, gauze that I have and I put it there um, to apply pressure. Um, and I'm not sure at what point I think I asked Serge or somebody who was um, somebody else who was nearby to to hold that and apply pressure while I went and grabbed oxygen. Okay, and so uh, give us just a little bit of information about your oxygen apparatus and what you did with that. Um, it's in my main bag, so I grabbed it. I grabbed my main bag and pulled it over, and um, it's a non-rebreather, so it's uh, it's the mask that goes over the face and it has a bag at the bottom that inflates, and so you can, the oxygen is delivered that way um, through the mask. Um, it's got the things go around the back of the head, hold the mask on. Okay, and just to be clear, we heard some uh, testimony earlier in the trial about Ms. Hutchins being intubated. Did you have anything to do with that process? I did not. Okay. Um, go ahead and proceed. Um, so I put oxygen on her and I called back to the ambulance, I, um, or to the, on the radio, I'm sorry. I called okay. back on the radio um, to make sure, to have somebody call back or whoever was communicating with 911 that we would need two ambulances and a bird at that point because I knew Joel would need an ambulance and she was going to need a helicopter. You already knew she was gonna need a helicopter. With that kind of um, trauma, yes. We are, we are 15, 18 minutes from the hospital, from, from town, um, and the, with the way that she was bleeding, I knew she wasn't gonna, she was gonna need more than, she, the, than we could provide or, or an ambulance could provide or Santa Fe hospitals could provide. She needed to go to the trauma center in Albuquerque. Okay, and do you have any knowledge about the condition that a patient has to be in in order for the helicopter to take off? They need to be stabilized. And do you have do you, do you know why that is given your medical training? Uh, I do not. Okay, fair enough. Um, After you called for two ambulances and a helicopter, what did you do at that point in time? I just continued. Um, uh, Helena was fighting. Um, she didn't want the oxygen on her face. She didn't want um, anybody holding anything on her. She, she was fighting. Um, And, and Serge was there too. Um, were you, at, after, uh, we understand that you were uh, providing oxygen and that Ms. Hutchins was struggling with that. Um, was there anything else that happened other than that before uh, paramedics arrived and took over that you can recall? Um, 
there was a point in time when um, when I when I first had walked in, uh, um, there were still people inside, and so I had I had said to whoever was there, AD wise, um, to to remove anybody that was in the church that didn't need to be there. If they weren't some of the people that I had asked to help, then they needed to be removed. Alec being one of them, he was it, still in the church. Uh, Shortly after I got in there. Sorry, I'm, I'm bouncing backwards a little. No, bit. no, it's okay. Um, it, so you asked an assistant director to do that for you? I believe either assistant director or PA, somebody. And, and a PA is a production production assistant, assistant which is um, when you're first trying to get in the union as a um, in 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 their union as a as an AD, you have to become a PA first, and you have to have so many days of PA work okay. um, that you submit to the union before you can start as the next, I believe it's the second second is the... Okay, all right, understood. Uh, so whoever it was that you spoke to and you asked them to uh, remove Mr. Baldwin and any other unnecessary people, did, did that person do that for you? Yes. Okay. Um, and at some point did paramedics arrive? Yes. Um, do you have any, any idea how long it took them to get there? It felt like forever. Um, I believe, though, it was, I, I don't have an exact time, um, I believe 12, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, and? And I do believe that there was a, uh, before the ambulance arrived, there, there might have been somebody else, a police, police officer, maybe that was around. But ambulance-wise, it was quite some time. Okay, and do you recall a police officer coming in with a medical bag and handing items to you? I do. Vaguely, but I do. Okay. Um, in your medical training, are you aware of, of um, the procedure that's done when a person is intubated, even though you didn't participate in that in this case? Yes. And. Are you aware that sometimes... Objection. Okay, uh, we have heard, uh, people are saying that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's bad that they continued production, that Alec Baldwin continued production on this film. I believe that um, Helena's husband made a request that they finish the show, that they finish it. Um, so I, I don't believe it was just forge ahead, you know, cut our losses and keep going. I think it was a decision that was made and was made with consultation there with the family members. This is uh this is tough testimony. Um, you've got you've got a medic who in most days, like the, the most excitement of her days is, is like trying to do some preventative treatment for sunburn. Um, you know, just uh, you know, bug bites and, and bee stings. And, uh, and, and she goes from that to being, you know, war zone level trauma with multiple patients and, and not enough help. Uh, just, just terrible. I, I can't imagine how she, how she felt with, uh, with literally she's, it's more than one person can handle with a single gunshot wound. There's, there's a lot to go on there and she has two patients and, and she did the right thing, uh, identified the, the person who was most severely injured and and was working with with Helena, but yeah, this this is this is a difficult testimony to hear. And I, I love that I love the testimony that she heard the gunshot and started running towards the sound okay, Ms. Schaefer, I'm before not gonna, they called for I'm not going to finish that question. Uh, thank you very much. I'll pass the witness. Objection cross sustained. Man. Let's see what the cross does. Schaefer. Hello. I want to start with this incident you talked about on direct uh, with the the ammunition and uh, Miss Gutierrez putting it into her fanny pack. Okay. Okay. Um, so first, um, you don't know the difference between blanks and dummies, right? I do not. Not not visually. Right. And um, did is what you saw in that one instance, Sarah Zachary bringing Hannah Gutierrez the different boxes of ammunition? She was next to Hannah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where the boxes were staged. 
Right, but you saw Sarah bring her a box um, and then Miss Gutierrez take um, the rounds and put them in her fanny pack, right? Correct. Okay. And you don't know if Sarah had shaken those box before she brought or those rounds before she bought them, brought them, right? I do not. Can metal prop guns that can't fire, um, that can't fire re like replicas, like gun replicas, would those require safety checks? Sure. So they might have objected because this is outside the scope. The judge is looking for defense, asking for an explanation here to this, why, why she should allow this question. This is the other side of the argument. Back to defense. I think she's probably heard enough here. Ready to rule? Yep. A nod for prosecution. Argument from defense. I don't think it's not, this is not going defense's way based on just the body language. Facial expressions are great from the judge. They're both, uh, both the judge and the prosecutor are explaining something to defense and they think they're on the same side. So now they understand. Here we go. Hey, Ms. Schaefer, you said you worked on several um, film sets before, right? Yes, ma'am. And you've given us testimony today about what you saw and safety checks and whatnot, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. Do you know what a replica gun is? There it is. Can you, I, I can tell you, I, do, I would not know if somebody showed me a plastic, or put a plastic gun near me or one that could fire. So whichever way you were referring to replica, I do not know. Because I would consider that a prop gun versus something the armorer would be in charge of. So oh, you, you are not, did you just say you don't know the difference between a replica gun and a real gun? If I were not to see them, touch them in front of me, no, I would not. Are you aware whether a replica gun even requires safety checks? I'm confused by your words. Do you mean a, a, if you mean a rubber gun, that does not need safety checks. You would not check a rubber gun. But if it is a gun that you put ammunition of any kind in, whether it's dummy or, um, you know, whatever other the quarter loads that they use, then those would need to be checked for safety. But a rubber gun would not. And you're saying that despite never working as an armor before, right? That is correct. I am not an armorer. And you've you've never even worked in props as a props assistant, have you? I have not worked in props. That is not my craft. And not my job. Um, have you have you ever worked on a set where there was actually a part time armor? Part time? No. Right. Um, day players, yes, but not part time. So who is in charge of the gun cart when the armor has to go to the, the restroom? That would, um, we, I've never been in that situation. If somebody needed, um, if the armorer was in the restroom, I would assume we would wait until the armorer was available to do their job. That would not be somebody for any other department that I am aware of. I think I could be a good armorer. I don't need many restroom breaks. When. You saw this incident with um, Sarah Zachary bringing Hannah this ammunition, um, and, and you saw Hannah, you said, put it in a fanny pack, right? Correct. You don't know if those were blanks or dummies, do you? I do not. And you, are, were you aware that Ms. Gutierrez's fanny pack had multiple separators in it? I was not. I, I did not. I just saw her pouring them in. I did not see anything other than the pouring motion. And you don't follow Miss Gutierrez or Sarah Zachary all day on set, do you? I do not. And you don't know if there are safety checks done that were out of your presence, do you? I, I do not. Is it true that you have filed a lawsuit against David Hall's PDQ, Seth Kinney and Sarah Zachary and Hannah Gutierrez? 
Yes, it is true. Among others, right? Correct. And in that lawsuit, you claim that you've been traumatized by the incident, right? Absolutely. And you have, uh, you are actually seeking money damages in that lawsuit for that is, extreme emotional distress? That is correct. Did you in fact obtain a civil judgment against Sarah Zachary in that lawsuit for a sum of money? Uh, it has been entered into judgment, yes. Um, and your, your case against Ms. Gutierrez, that's still pending, right? That is correct. Do you believe that your testimony here today is going to help you in your civil case against her? I'm not here for my civil case. I'm here oh. for this case. I, I understand what you're here for, ma'am, but uh, do you believe that your testimony here is going to help you in that case? I'm not thinking about that case. I'm thinking about the fact that had our armorer or our first AD done their jobs, we would not be here. A woman would not be dead. A mother would not be gone. And you filed a civil lawsuit over this? Yes. For your damages? Correct. To get money? Did not for money, it's not how it started. And you, ma'am, are uh, an EMT basic or an EMT? What is your EMT training? EMT. There is an EMT, there's EMT advanced or advanced EMT, and there's paramedic. And you do have a certification, right? Yes, I do. Are you licensed through the state of New Mexico? I am, and the state of California, as well as National Registry. In fact, you also have medical experience working at a hospital for almost three years, That right? is correct. Um, and that was in an overflow unit for the emergency room? I, uh, we need to approach. All right. Um. I'm not sure what the boom, 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 boom is in, uh, in chat. Um, I put it in the band list until I could figure out what's going on. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's cut down on the, uh, on the spam just a wee bit, if that's all right. Lawsuit. Uh, I think that's, uh, it's, that's a, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's good cross. Um, she, she literally has a pending lawsuit against the defendant in here. And that question, I, I, I do appreciate the fact that the defense attorney, uh, basically said, ma'am, that's not what I asked. Uh, I, I'm asking, did, do you think that your testimony here will help your lawsuit? Uh, they didn't say, but I believe it's a $1.5 million settlement on the first one, um, that, uh, against uh, Sarah Zachary that the judgment's been entered on that one what is your experience um, you did say you worked at the hospital but what is your experience with treating gunshot wounds um, I do not have experience with with gunshot wounds they were not on the floor I worked on uh, why wouldn't you be trained on um, on that type of, of injury when you're dealing on a, on a set a with real guns. This is for defense. I am trained for it. You asked about my experience at the hospital. Okay, so you are trained with treating gunshot wounds. Correct. But you just don't have experience actually applying that training. Is that fair? Not in the hospital setting or outside of it, correct. You said on direct that you had two trauma bags? I have my normal bag, which has, I, it's a 96% bag. It's kind of like a walking Walgreens but it, it has um, uh, gauze in it and trauma shoes in case something else is needed until I get my main trauma bag. Did you have any equipment with you on that day specifically addressed to treating a gunshot wound? No. You didn't have chest seals? No. Did so you have any IVs? I am not licensed to start IVs. So I would not. And we are on a movie set where there should be no gunshot wounds. That's what they're referring Well, are for. there other things on a movie set that could cause a thoracic puncture on the not, set? Not generally. Um, not generally. If there is going to be something that's going to happen where something more traumatic like that could happen, then we would request a standby ambulance to be on set with us so that we had all the gear and equipment needed as well as additional medics to help. But this uh, movie had knives involved in it, right? I could not tell you. And horses? There were horses. Snakes? There were wild snakes. We did not bring them onto set. Can we approach? 
approach. Lions, tigers, bears, giraffes, at least one donkey, uh, horses, lots of, uh, I, I see where, where defense is going with this. She's saying, okay, you, you didn't have anything for treating the gunshot wound and, and the, the gotcha response was what we got from the medic on, on stand from Ms. Schaefer, where she said, yeah, but, uh, I'm on a movie set. There's not supposed to be any gunshot wounds on a movie set. We, you, we prepare for the things that, that are probably most probable, um, and, and a gunshot, that, that's, I think that turned around and, and bit the defense a little bit with that response. She's holding her ground. She's doing well. She got uh, cornered a little bit on saying you're not ready to treat or you're not, you're not trained to treat. This is, I didn't say trained to treat. I'm just at the hospital, I didn't deal with gunshot wounds. So this is, uh, she, is she is feisty. It's a little bit fiery, uh, the exchange here. And uh, we sort of expected that knowing that there's a lawsuit um, in the works as well. Snakes don't bite on movie sets. They're just, uh, it's just for show. It's like, it's like a fake bite. Do you know who intubated Miss Hutchins? I do not. I can assume, but I do not. You said, um, You can assume. Well, I mean, were you, did you see it happen? I did not. Okay. Prior to all of these, these concerns that you're telling us about here today with Ms. Gutierrez, did you never raised any of those concerns with anyone? I did not. Not even the safety director, David Halls? I did not. And you said on direct, uh, I believe, that prior to the the shot that you heard on that day, um, that I think I heard you say, I wanna get it clear, that you did not hear Dave Hall's yell out, rehearsals up, first team on set. Did you ever hear that? I did not. You never heard any call out that they were gonna do that set? Not, no, not on, not on the radio, I did not hear it. Uh, doesn't mean it didn't happen and I didn't hear it, but. Um, no, I just wanna know what you heard. I you did not hear, hear that, no. Okay, no further questions. Mr. Bowles is smiling, uh, thinks that was effective. Ms. Schaefer, our chest seals and IVs um, customary for movie set medics? Chest yes. seals, if you can get them, uh, it, we, we're not, it's not like we can go to a hospital and pick up equipment that, or, or, or products that we would keep in our bags, whatever we generally keep in our bags is something that we buy over the counter. Um, there are ways to make chest seals, but they're not the most, um, they're, they, they sometimes hurt more than, than help. Um, IVs would be something that needs to be ordered, and if you do not have um, medical direction or a doctor that works at an ER that says, yes, you can work to your scope of practice or your license level, if you don't have that, which most medics in New Mexico don't have, most medics don't have that medical direction, uh, you are not allowed to, to do that on outside of a hospital setting or outside of a, if you are employed by a uh, EMS. Defense okay. is failing once again on redirect. Um, and, and shifting gears, you were asked on cross-examination some questions about um, whether or not safety checks of ammunition uh, would have taken place outside your presence. Do, do you recall that question? Yes. In your experience, are the safety checks of the ammunition done in the presence of the crew and the cast? Yes. Do you know if there's a reason for that? I'm not sure. Well, if a safety check of ammunition was done outside the presence of the cast and crew, would the cast and crew have knowledge as to the level of safety associated with that ammunition? Not if it was not done in front of them, no. Um, but the cast and crew are all welcome to ask for it to happen. Okay. Um, you were asked some questions about a civil lawsuit, and you, you were asked if you were testifying today because you thought it would help your civil lawsuit. Correct. Um, and I think your response was, 
you didn't do it for money, that's not how it started. So I'd like you to, and then I think you got cut off. I'd like you to go ahead and finish that. The reason that I brought any kind of lawsuit to anybody in the, in the, in the beginnings is because I wanted change <clears throat> in our industry. I did not want something like this to be able to happen again to anybody else, to their families, to the crew that knows them as family. Um, I wanted some sort of change to happen, some policy change, um, whether it be required to have a standby ambulance or it be required to have additional medics if there's going to be big stunts or big gunfire or anything that could potentially cause you know, somebody to become injured. I wanted that change in our industry because on that, on that show there were 75, roughly 75 crew that is minimal to compared to what I normally would have on set. I would have no less than 300 usually before I would be approved to have an additional medic to come and help me. That is just not okay. That is not okay. Help me. That is just not okay. That is not okay. And being the only medic there with two patients, knowing my resources were not close enough to, to help in any significant way is what I wanted to change. And have you suffered from uh, extreme trauma uh, as a result of this? Yes. Um, I, can I just expand? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to object. Uh, sh I, okay. There's an objection here. Um, this this is tough, and I want to be sensitive here because I I do not I'm not trying to diminish this at all. Um, the work that medics do is traumatizing. They see things that most of us um, would would never sleep again if we saw. Uh, it, it's it's amazing what they they go through, especially for the work that they earn. Um, I I believe that that she has that desire. My concern right here is that she says it began because I wanted change in the industry. I wanted this to change. She's not talking about the armor. She's talking about the, the way that medics are treated as far as how many medics are on set, um, how much, you know, how, what priority is given to safety and, and you know, for, you know, response to, to incident. Uh, so she didn't want some other medic to be in her same position with two people bleeding out on the floor of a set 15 mi uh, miles from the closest hospital and, and no ambulance nearby. I think that's what she's referring to. The concern I have is that she says that was that was why I was doing it. It wasn't for the lawsuit. But when you settle, and let's proceed. That, um, when you settle for money, it 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 makes it. I don't know. Uh, it upon takes, my takes question, you asked if your, your uh, I asked you uh, about your claim for uh, emotional distress, and and you responded and asked if you could expand on that. The court is going to let you. Please expand. Thank you. I went home that night and I looked at my little boy, who's the same age as Helena's son, and all I could think about is how I could not save his mother's life and how he was going to grow up without a mother and how her spouse lost the love of his life. Uh, I did not expect this testimony. I did not expect this testimony. Um, so you're going it. to, uh, and I mean no harm to you, but we're going to strike that testimony, okay? Yeah. So disregard that testimony, okay? All right, let's, uh, let's. Okay. Uh, All right, thank you, ma'am. The I judge gave that. All right, thank you. To be done. She told the lawyer to be done with this one. <laughs> Wow, the judge regrets her decision. And it was interesting. You heard the prosecutor say, "Ma'am, you started to expand on that, and <clears throat> the court is going to let you finish." And it was the judge made that call. Oh, absolutely right. She's traumatized. That's clear. And there's lots of guilt. She's still conflicted. In my view. I I don't think she should have any guilt. I. Oh my goodness. I, if anyone has ever been in a situation where the they were thrown, even with some level of responsibility and training, and thrown in over their head, and, and just, I mean, clearly, she responded the way she was trained. She was running to the scene before anyone had called for help, okay? She, she is literally the hero with the cape in this story, um, and, I, and I'm not diminishing that in any way. 
I I would say that th- this is not her fault. This is not you know whether or not she had a a chest seal, which is is used for gunshot wounds. The whole purpose of a chest seal is because uh, it's it's a it's basically like saran wrap that's sticky with glue. Okay, so it sticks to your body. It's to keep blood on the inside, uh, and, and you generally you want to keep blood on the inside uh, for the, for the most part. Uh, injury, injury like that, especially a traumatic one, just to to prevent people from bleeding out. It doesn't stop internal bleeding. Uh, but that's where you're going to need some some additional equipment. I, I don't fault her for any of this. Um, and I honestly, I don't even fault her for suing. Juror question. Juror question just handed up. Whoa! This is the first time we've seen delivered by George special delivery. It seems mean to ask for her lawsuit. What else can? What else than money can she sue for? See, no one is a hero in the story. No one. I respectfully disagree. She said nothing. Oh, there. Everybody had. We have. We have the benefit of hindsight, right? We're looking at this and we're looking back and we're saying, you know what could have happened, and we we can find the every single mistake. Emotional. Um, They're asking why it's right. The last, her narrative, where she said, "Can I expand on that?" And then she continued on and on and on. That's what you're going to strike. Okay, you're going to disregard that as evidence. The rest of it. Her direct, her cross-examination, and then her redirect, except when she said, can I expand on that, and then went into, um, you know, her personal trauma, okay? Do you, any, any questions on that? Okay, thank you. The jury asked, uh, how are we supposed to unring that bell? Which part of, of her being very effective at uh, making us all cry would you like us to forget? Council. So Ms. Schaefer's done. Council approach. Council approach. Wow. Lots of approaching. Okay, so Ms. Schaefer, the EMT, or the medic, oh, she was followed by, who, who was the next one? I just barely said their name and I forgot. Lots of witnesses today. We're just flying through them. There's our next witness taking the stand. George giving her the lay of the land, saying, don't sit down yet. We're going to swear you in first, and then you're going to sit down. Uh, Mimi Mitchell. Mimi, Mimi Mitchell. It's the first time we ever see a juror question or a juror question delivered by George. Uh, we've heard that there are juror questions. I believe that's the fourth one. Um, but we don't, uh, the judge doesn't read them to us, to us. We just have to assume, but that's the first one we've seen the delivery process and sort of, we've, we've got the most scoop on that one as compared to all the others. There was one where they, they asked if we could turn on closed captioning on the video. Um, bless you judge. She just sneezed. She sparkles and has a binder too. She's ready, ready to go. Ivy saying a financial person. Uh, Mimi Mitchell. Let's see, what other names do we have here? Okay, raise your right hand, man. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Speak into the microphone, thank you. Well, she completely moved the microphone away. She like, she like. We don't need. We won't need that. We need the microphone back. Like, point it right at your mouth. Ma'am, will you state your full name for the record? Mamie Elizabeth Mitchell. And Ms. Mitchell, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a substitute teacher. How long have you been a substitute teacher? Uh, I think around two and a half weeks. <laughs> so prior to being a substitute teacher, what did you do for a living? I was a Hollywood script supervisor. And can you explain to the jury what a script supervisor does? 
Sometimes I pre-time the script. We don't know what that means. I, know I, read, I read the script, and in my mind, I give a producer and director an idea of how long their movie is. And based on that, they'll cut some scenes or add some scenes, build some sets or not build the sets. So it's a budgetary thing. Um, while we're shooting a film, I provide the actors with lines if they need them. Um, I keep the continuity in all areas. And, and when you say you keep the continuity, can you explain to us what that means? It means that your right hand is on your right hip and you're leaning on your left hand. And I'm going to make sure you do that every time we shoot. That scene. The camera. That scene for, these, for that dialogue. So it's maintaining the continuity, which gives, which brings me to that, the thing that I really do is to ensure that a film cuts together seamlessly in the editing room, which gives the, uh, the director uh, choices. Um, as a part of being a script supervisor, uh, do you keep very close track of all of the filming that's done on the set and the scenes that have been filmed? Yes, I log every shot, lens, how long the shot is, if it's incomplete, if it's good, if it's not good, if it's fair, if it's the best one. And if there's an airplane on line six, but then the airplane, it's okay in line nine, sound, everything that has to do with photography, I have in here, and that's translated to the editing room. Okay, how long uh, were you a script supervisor before you decided to become a substitute teacher? Uh, about 42 years. And in those years that you uh, have worked in the film industry, um, how many movies and uh, TV shows do you think you've worked on? 74. And of those 74 shows, if you can guesstimate for us how many of those um, had received an Academy Award. Live guns nope. and an armorer. I think I've worked with an armorer about 24 times on 24 films. Sometimes, okay. yeah, go ahead. Sometimes maybe a gun is used one time, and if the armor was brought in for that, I'm not really aware of that. Uh, oh. But when guns are really a part of a, of, a, of a script, about 24 times. Okay. Um, safe to say you have a lot of experience with uh, armorers on movie sets. I do. Um, as the script supervisor, are you present for every single take that is filmed for every single scene? Unless it's a second unit and I have a second unit script supervisor, but for every first unit shot, I am on, I'm there for every take. We're gonna need on her to explain rest, everything. Uh, were you there for every her take? terminology is yes. okay. beyond us. So, I am going to ask you if you noticed any differences between Ms. Gutierrez and the other armors that you worked with on the previous 24 occasions. No objection. All right. Um, I wonder how Hannah is taking this testimony. Let's see if we can uh, spin the camera around and take a look at her in just a second. This lady has tons of experience. I love that she went into teaching. Honestly, uh, the the idea that somebody can have a, a successful career and then afterwards can can turn and and bring some of their life experience into to inspire children that is awesome. That is really cool. Um, I wonder how old of students she teaches as well. Yeah, is Hannah giving the, uh, the band attorney the side eye? So 
Something's going on over that on that table to the right of her that's quite interesting. Or maybe she just doesn't want to make eye contact with the witness, with Mimi. Mimi. Think of the backup attorney is behind her now. I think he was ordered to stay at the table. Let's see. I'm not sure where they went, but. Ma'am, do you recall the question? No, unfortunately not. Um, Objection. How did Ms. Gutierrez compare to the other previous 24 armorers that you worked with? I found her to be inexperienced and did not present in the, in the way that I'm used to seeing professional armors, union armors, uh, on a film set. It was different. Um, did you find her behavior on the film set to be professional? I did not. Um, did you did you ever take notice of where firearms uh, were stored during filming or around the set? I saw them on her cart. And when you saw them on her cart, was she present? Not all the time. And. Was that unusual? Everything about the cart was unusual. When you say everything about the cart was unusual, can you explain to the jury what you mean? In my experience, what I have experienced on film sets is that the armors are very quiet, uh, focused, and very organized. Everything is very organized. And they're very focused. I don't know if I said that, but they're very focused and sort of methodical about okay. everything. Their movements are very methodical. I'm gonna take you back to your concerns about the cart specifically. Um, can you explain uh, what your concerns were with the state of the prop cart? Well, I just never seen anything like it. it. It just reminded me, I mean, it, not that it reminded me, but the best way I can describe it is it was like that drawer in your kitchen where you just put stuff that doesn't really go anywhere else, the random things, and I have two of those. you're going to look for something. And They're just, called junk drawers, and everybody has junk drawers. To me, they look different than what I was used to. Did it seem organized? No, it did not seem organized. Um, at, at any point in time, were you aware that there were what I'm going to refer to as accidental discharges that took place on set? I was on the set at the cabin. Uh, hang on, you're, you're, you're a step ahead of me. Um, were you aware of the accidental discharges? Yes. Okay. Um, were you present for the accidental discharges? Yes. Okay, can you go ahead and explain to us what, what happened with regard to those accidental discharges? Well, I believe the first one, I was walking... Shall I describe the set? I was... I was uh, From here to where those people are back there, away, walking back. We had camped out over here for a wide shot. And so we kind of moved back. And as I was walking back, there, there was just a gun. A gunshot went off. There was a gunshot. And it was frightening. Um, and do you know... Um, do you know the circumstances of that accidental discharge? Well, it was one of them that I know about now. No, no, that's okay. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, when you heard the gunshot go off, 
why was it frightening? It's a Western. You know, we've heard that there's lots of guns and blanks and... Because it doesn't happen. And what doesn't happen? Guns do not just go off on a film set. Um, in your career, do you recall having that ever happen to you? I do not. And when... Can you give the jury a little bit of, of um, background on... Given that guns go off on movie sets because there's blank ammunition in the gun and guns are being shot, um, why would it why would it have startled you? What what's the procedure usually for gunshots? Fire in the hole. Someone yells, "Fire in the hole." Um, and it, what does what does that tell you when someone yells that? To tell us what you're doing. Ear, fingers in your ears, mouth open. Keep, you have to keep the mouth open. Why do you keep your mouth open? It helps your eardrums. Something about that. We just, that's what we do. We're taught, that's, I've known that forever. You keep your mouth open and you go like this. Okay. Um, so... You protect your hearing. With regard to the accidental discharges, um, did anyone call fire in the hole? No. Um, and for? how many accidental discharges occurred while you were working on set? Two. And do you recall if they were the same day? They were the same day, same set. Did they cause you to uh, feel concerned? I was concerned and I was confused. What do you mean confused? Shortly after I was hired by Roe Waters to do this movie. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I think I understand, and I'm going to stop you. Okay. Um, so let me... Uh, Whatever you're about to say, and, don't and say let's, it. Let's... Uh, let me... Let me take you to... I'm sorry, let me back up. Okay. Um, Ma'am, you indicated that you are on the set of rest. You were present for the uh, filming of every every take of every scene. Is that right? Yes. Um, and I am. Wait a minute. Let's get out of there. Back in the colonial days, they wouldn't yell "fire in the hole." They'd yell "have a care." Yeah. You yell "have a care," and then they'd light the cannon. I've got some great slow-mo footage of cannons being fired. Lots of fire. Lots of smoke. Lots of fun. Um, I am going to show you what is marked as States Exhibit 164. I'm going to ask to have it entered into evidence, admitted into evidence, and permission to publish. No objection, Your Honor. All right, States 164 is admitted and you may publish. <coughs> So, Ms. Mitchell, um, you're present every time they're rolling camera, is that right, on rest? With the exception of sometimes, uh, a, just a couple of times. Uh, Hang on, let, 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 let me ask you this. Um, do you recall uh, meeting with me and me showing you a video that I wanted you to talk about? That was from October 17th. Do you recall <laughs> yeah. that? No. Lead a little okay. further. Um, oh, I don't. Would you refresh? Could you refresh my memory, please? <laughs> uh, I, I will refresh your memory. Um, we're going to have to unplug because I'm going to have to refresh. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's all right. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Do you, re you recall? You know what I'm talking about now? I do. Okay. I remember um, that thing? I haven't asked you the question, but you remember what I want you to <laughs> I say didn't next? Even turn them on yes. On. Let's go ahead. Um, were you present? for the filming of that take. Yes, I was. All right. I'm going to pull up States Exhibit 164 and publish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, take 121, scene 125C, or take two. 
Real 121. Ma'am, do you recall scene the date take two. that this particular Camera take a. was filmed? I'm sorry. It, well, she's using hang notes on just a judge. second. In order for you to, to it, in order for you to refer to your notes, we need you to 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 have a discussion with us. Okay. So, as you sit here today, do you recall the date that this was filmed? I don't recall the date, but it's in my script. Okay. Would it refresh your memory if you looked at your notes? Yes. Okay. So what I want you to do, listen to me carefully. I am. I want you to look at your notes. And then I just want you to keep that information to yourself. Wait a second, don't make me know. Okay. Get, they get to approach you and see what you're looking at. Yep. Defense, oh, sure. Defense gets okay. to come um, take a look if they want. Have this, when you look in your notes, just take note of the date and then wait for a follow up question, okay? Okay. Do you, does counsel wish to approach to see what she's looking at? I don't need to see her notes. Do you, do you want to see her notes? Yes. The, see sure. Yes, sure. of course they would. Yeah. Okay. Shall I open it up? <laughs> Hand me your notes. Let's see. It's the whole it's the whole movie script, I think. It's the whole movie script right there. All right, so the, the red numbers on the clapperboard is the actual time code. And there can be a couple different ways to do that. Sometimes it's it's literally counting frames. Like most movies are shot with, you know, uh, like twenty four P is what they call it. Twenty four frames per second. Uh, TV on you know that we're familiar with is usually 30 frames per second in the United States or um, or 60 frames per second uh, and, uh, and so it's it's it, sometimes it's gonna be that sometimes it's gonna be like a running counter and per down to like the hundredth of a second just they start the day and the time codes all synced everything synced up the time code on the cameras the time code on the clapboards so they literally can just anytime they pause that clapboard or when that clapper comes together <laughs> they can just cut to that point and put all the audio and the video together, and they don't have to waste time trying to line up the sound with the mouth movement. So it's just organization. Ms. Mitchell, go ahead and take your time. Okay, 29.97. I'm 30, 30 is good enough for what we're doing I, here. I don't want to get into why this is confusing, but uh, I think a gremlin came in and took the page because I can't find it. Hey, hey, <laughs> gremlin. Uh, for those of you who had Gremlin on your bingo card, uh, go ahead and, and check that off. The Gremlin came in and took the page. It's missing from Should the... Should be October uh, 20th. It's October no. 20th. No. No? Stop for a second. Stop talking. You're, we, I told you to wait for a follow-up question. Sorry. Don't just speak, okay? Okay. Wait, this, wait, wait with us. Okay. This witness is going to go off the charts on defense across because she's just going to talk. There it is. I found it. And talk and talk and talk. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, has your memory been refreshed as to the date? Yes. And, and let me just ask you, and you can close, you, you, take note of the date, okay? <laughs> and okay. is there something that's on the screen that, that helps you refer to your notes? 1017. You, 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 no, go ahead and answer my question. Yes. What's on the screen that helps you refer that, that helps you find that in your notes? 125 Charlie, the scene number. Okay, so the 125 C is the scene number. Is that what you said? That's the slate number. The scene is 125. This is the slate number. Okay. Um, and, and so are you able to compare your notes to the information on that slate? Yes. And were you present for the filming of this take? I was. And what was the date that this was filmed on? October 17th, <laughs> All right. 2021. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and publish it now. Thank you. Mark. We got to do the footprints again. Here we Hold go. on. So we're here. He's camera left. No, that's it. I'm sorry. No, we um, it's my understanding that part of your job is continuity. Is that right? Correct. So I'm going to ask you, can you identify this prop that we're looking at right here? Uh, on on Mr. Baldwin. 
Yes. What is that prop? It's his over-the-shoulder holster. And bandolier. His holster or bandolier, you said? Mm -hmm. a and what, what are these things that, that are right here? Bullets. Um, and are, are, is that the way that the bandolier was loaded on October 17th? Correct. Thank you, ma'am. Um, all right, let's uh, shift gears a little bit. Um, Ms. Mitchell, I'm going to take you to the date of October 21st, uh, 2021. Uh, were you working on set that day? Yes. Um, we understand that there was some filming in the morning, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, do you recall taking a lunch break that day? I did. Um, and, well, let me back up. We've, we've heard a lot of testimony that the camera crew walked off that day. Yes. A and um, did you have a discussion with Mr. Souza and Ms. Hutchins about making the day? I did. Okay, without saying what they said, uh, can you just tell us, tell us what you said to them in terms of that conversation? Good luck here. I said, I, I turned to Helena and, and I said, I shoot with one camera all my career until shooting with two cameras became the thing. I said, if, and Joel, and then Joel, and then I looked at Joel and I said, if we're organized, and you have a plan, we can make the day with one camera. And Elena said, I shoot stop, with the stop. one camera too all the time. Oh, I guess. Okay, but provided only for, only for context. Unavailable um, witness. So we understand that there was some filming and then you went to lunch. I, I want you to start after lunch uh, where, where it's our understanding that, that, uh, that there's a, something going on in the church preparing for a scene. If you can describe that to us, please. Do you recall, let me, let me ask you this, when, uh, when you went into the church after lunch, were other people already there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and? After lunch. After lunch. We're only going to talk about after lunch. Okay. Yes. Uh, so when you were in the church after lunch, um, who do you recall being in the church? Doran Curtin and 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 Ms. Curtin what what was her role on set wardrobe okay okay keep going please she had blood she was going to refresh blood um F fake blood I assume fake blood okay I switched places with her because she's real tall and I said could I stand in front of you and we laughed and I went in front of her Helena uh, Serge, my director, Ross, Zach, uh, Alec Baldwin in the pew with the gun, Karen Kuhn. Who, who's Karen Kuhn? She's a still photographer. Thank you. And she was on this side. Okay, thank you. Uh, coming into the church, I think there was a special effects guy there, maybe the supervisor. Okay. Do you, let me ask you this. When you came into the church, did Mr. Baldwin already have his gun? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So you didn't see how he got the gun or who handed him the gun? I did not. Okay. So you come into the church. Uh, Dave Hall was there also. Okay. Mr. Halls was there. You guys are missing. I've got it on How my knee. I'm clicking right as the name is said. How long before the gun goes off are you in the church? Not very long at all. Okay. So when you come into the church, um, uh, you've indicated these people were there. What, what was happening in the moments before the gun went off? I switched place with Doran. Um, 
uh, uh, Helena was here, and she's doing her thing with the light, you know, looking at him. She's doing her lighting. And, and people are not static on a film set. So she's, it's a dance. And she's doing this and looking at the, there was an onboard monitor, and Joel is looking, and they're there. She and moves the doing microwave. Thing and looking at him. It's not microwave. And, and microphone. That. And uh, I don't know what everybody else was doing, but that's what they were doing. Okay. I, I saw the camera. I knew I had an idea of what shot it was. One of three. I wasn't hadn't seen the lens yet, so I wasn't sure what it was yet. And uh, and that's what they were doing. Uh, and then what happened? And then I took my phone out. It's okay. Don't I took don't. my phone yeah. out. Oh, he uh, the actor was practicing on his own. Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, he was practicing, and as I was doing, he was practicing, and then um, when I looked down to my phone uh, to get his, I looked, got the picture. I was going to check his wardrobe, make sure everything matched. And, and let me stop you. As a part of your continuity job, do you frequently take photos and, and videos on your phone? I frequently take photos. Okay. Sometimes it flips. Uh, it, I take photos. Okay. Um, and when you said sometimes it flips, is it, uh, on occasion, uh, do you end up with a live photo or a short video? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you're you're using your phone for continuity. Take constantly. Okay. Uh, what happens then? So I was I got my picture, and I was going to check his wardrobe and right when I was doing that explosion. Um, and when that happens, what do you do? I, uh, well, I, my, it, my body, I had a black, it was a, a <coughs> shock. And then I heard mo a guttural moaning, and I looked around, and my director was crab crawling backwards, and then I turned around to look at Alec, and when I did, she was falling in my direction, and I ran. And when you say she was falling, you mean Helena Hutchins, Hutchins was falling, it, and I ran. It, and when you, why did you run? To get help. And so. And away from danger. Okay. Uh, where did you go? I ran down the, out the door, down the steps to the left, towards the one of the set. I, I, you know, I, it was a set deck truck, one of the trucks. And pull and and uh, I have and uh, with my phone, and I start dialing nine one one. And uh, are you the person that that called nine one one in this case? I am. And when you spoke to nine one one, how did you describe uh, the incident that you were calling them for? Um, Ms. Mitchell, I believe I said. Um, I believe I said we've had two people shot accidentally on a film set. We need help immediately. And why did you use the word accidentally? I did not want her to think there was an active shooter or a mass shooting. I needed and gather an army together. I needed, I, I wanted to come right away. Okay. Help right away. And, and you thought that, that if If law enforcement or, or medics thought that it was an active shooter, it may take them more time. Is that what you mean? That's correct. Okay. Um, and, ma'am, have you also filed a civil lawsuit against the production company and other folks in this case? I have. Are you testifying today because you think it's going to help your civil lawsuit? No, it's not going to help my civil lawsuit at all. Um, are you testifying truthfully today? I am. Thank you, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. Okay, let's see who questions her. Is it going to be Mr. Bowles? It is. This will be interesting. 
Well, good afternoon. Hi. Hi. I just have a few questions for you, not too much. Um, first of all, I want to go back to your movies with the other armors. You said there was about 24 of them, give or take. Okay. Um, on those, did you ever have a situation where there was a part-time armor? <clears throat> to your knowledge, somebody that did part-time armory and part-time something else? I think there might have been one or two. Were those day, day people or was that part-time? Well, what's that term you used earlier, day, when they just come in for a day and then they're gone? A day player? Day player. Was, were those day players or was that a part-time armor? Do you mean was it a prop master who also does armory? Yes, or yes, even a day player <coughs> did both. I don't remember. Okay. A day player. Okay. Um, now, with regard to seeing um, the cart you mentioned, do you know whether when you saw the cart sometimes whether those firearms on there were real or whether they were replica firearms? Not to my knowledge. I think everything was a uh, real firearm. Okay. Are you not aware whether there were any replica firearms, any fake type firearms on Rust? No. Okay. Now, also, you were aware that the armor would be called to seem and used. Yes. Okay. So, on those times, it would be impossible for the armorer to be at her cart too, right? Well, I've never heard of that before. Well, kind of hard to be in two places at one time, isn't it? That's kind of the point. Um, now, did you know whether this cart, this cart was shared with props and armory men? I think it was. So, when you know you saw the messy and you, you described it your kitchen drawer where you put everything do you know if the props people were coming and putting their stuff on it too i think they were okay and so do you know who might have caused the you know things to be in different places was it props or you don't know who was doing that do you i do who they were all doing it okay so did you see them yes you saw sarah zachary Putting stuff on it? Yeah. Three women at a cart. Sometimes. Okay. This woman's going to talk. With She's regard talk to the. Talk and talk. Um, and it's going to hurt the prosecution. The discharge that you said you heard? You remember that? Which one? Well, you described one. You were walking. I think you said you heard a sound, a shot. Is that right? A misfire. Yes. Okay. Two of them. Okay. Did you find out about that well after? Or did you actually, were you actually there? I was there. It almost blew my ears out. Okay. Now, do you know whether any of that was special effects? It was not special effects. Okay. Did you report that to anybody? Everyone, everyone, I didn't have to report it. Everybody knew it. Okay. Everybody in production? I, I don't know about production. Everyone on the set heard it. Okay. Do you know if Dave Halls heard it? Dave Halls was there. Okay. So he would have known, so you wouldn't have had to tell him, right? Everyone who was at that set, on that set, and there were a lot of people, heard the gun go off accidentally, both to twice. Okay, a uh, different topic in the script. Do you remember whether it required a draw in the scene uh, on October 21st, 2021, after lunch? Did that scene require a draw from the holster? For the actor, for Mr. Baldwin, to draw from his holster? It did. Okay. Do you remember if that required him to point the, the weapon? That's not the shot that we discussed before lunch. Okay. So was that in the script or, or not? 
No. Okay. I have nothing to do. Wow. I'm surprised he stopped right there. She was. Uh, I don't have the additional okay. questions. Thank you. Thank you. You're excused. Thank you. Thank you. That was a risky witness for the prosecution, I think. She was willing to talk confidently about a lot of things. Okay, we are at 384. For those of you that, uh, if there's a long time, there's no mention, and then you, uh, you say I missed one. Just rewind a little bit, and you'll see that you actually missed me counting it. So uh, I'm, I'm quick. I'm like Speedy Gonzalez with the counter. So, All right, we are going to, let's take this up here. Another approach. Any notable witnesses today? Uh, we've got some spicy ones, especially this morning. A lot happening today. Uh, thank you, Weather Watch. Should we pin this one? Should we pin this one? Uh, Mamie Mitchell, M A M I E, I believe was her name that we just had. We're going to clear this pin out. Who's up next? Gonna finish today with Seth, says Lori. Have not seen Seth yet. We had a cowboy. We did have a cowboy. A Wrangler. A cowboy in Wranglers, maybe. I guess I, I shouldn't even mention that because you guys are gonna go off on that. Uh somebody needs to go back and watch the whole trial again and plot Ari's shortest, longest, and average reaction time to ABC. Then impeach him. <laughs> I am not going to replay that for you. Thought the last two days were spicier. They they were. This today has not been the spiciest, especially because uh, the judge is doing all these uh, approach and argue in front of me. That it cuts a lot of the drama out when you're not performing for the jury. Uh, it's really just straight argument in front of the judge, and and it's not nearly as um, dramatic as we see when we have the speaking objections. We bring back Wyatt. I don't think they reserved uh, the right to recall him. No, we won't see him again in this trial. All right, we're going to break for the week. Whoa. So, you no, know, just because we did a whole week. All right, I don't want to confuse anybody. We're going to break for the, for the day. Okay? All right. We're done. So. Please Happy weekend to us. Don't or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Do not do any research. Do not Google um, about the case or the trial, you know, the, the rust production, anything, okay? The evidence is what you receive in court. Very, very important, okay? Have a good and safe weekend. We'll see you. Uh, yes, what if the jurors wants just to be... What if the jurors wants what? Wants to do uh, a meet and greet. wants to be reassured that we're not going past the eighth. I can't give that re reassurance. Okay. Uh, past the can, eighth. Can we approach on yeah, that though? Yeah, sure. It might be helpful. Hey, counsel, get those walking shoes on. Uh, the question was, one of the jurors wants assurance that we are not going past the eighth. The eighth, March eighth, that's what they're talking about. The judge says, I cannot do that. And uh, she says, wait, 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 wait. We, we might be able to help. The judge doesn't know the schedule. Uh, she sort of gets finds out sort of as they go along, and maybe at this point in the trial, um, it might be helpful for the two sides to talk and see how much time they have. I, th I think at this point, defense um, obviously they've they've got a lot of witnesses on the schedule and, and some decisions to make, but uh, prosecution is nearly nearing the end of their case in chief, so they probably can give a pretty good idea is what's left. And, it, and, and if they're approaching to reassure, that's a good sign for those that have like something on the ninth. 
I think we're going to be done before the 8th for sure. Wanted to go till the end of today. Greenhead Southern Girl, we were expecting That's it to right. go late. Okay. You don't have to, nobody has to nod their head on which one of you wants to know. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so not past, whether, whether it's going to go past the 8th, they think that they will finish their case um, the day before that. The yeah, 7th. And that would be finishing both cases. Yes. Prosecution and defense. Assuming everything every goes at the right clip, but then, but uh, so. Judge, just a, a point of, of clarification. What we discussed is that we expect, hopefully, to be doing closing arguments the morning of the seventh. Okay, but that doesn't mean your de deliberations are not going to go past the eighth. All right, because once it's handed to you, it's however long you all. Deliberate, okay? So Three I would say, in an abundance of caution, that it will go past the eighth as far as deliberations go. That's in an abundance of caution, okay? Just knowing jurors have to get situated after they get the evidence, and then, you know, it just, it just depends, okay? Am I making myself clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, we're in recess. General right. mumble, mumble of acknowledgments. All right, so now we are in recess. We're going to go ahead and uh, zoom out. Verdict on the 7th. Verdict on the 7th. Maybe. Might happen. Wow, clear as mud. We get uh, an early start on the week. I might have time to go metal detecting tonight. This is crazy. Uh, no, no, no. Did I say metal detecting? I meant I might have time to go on a date with my wife tonight <laughs> because we had an anniversary yesterday, at least the anniversary of, of engagement yesterday and we're going to celebrate it tonight that's my first thought that's what jumped in my head and then i thought after that later this weekend after i've done all my honeydew list then then i might have some time for metal detecting i'm sorry those two thoughts got jumbled together uh, and and you incorrectly heard what i was thinking so uh sorry about that i did get a couple things in the email thank you for those uh brianne see i i saw that uh that alert that one came to me as well thank you Okay, we've got, as far as email goes, Evie, you said you sent me something. Okay. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Got a response uh, out of Maricopa County. Sweet. This is one that I was waiting for. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got lots, of, lots of cool stuff. Are you seeking corporate video? You want to be the pool camera? What should we do? Should we be, be, be pool camera in Maricopa County? Hmm. Hmm. It takes us to June. There's a. Let me tell you what Maricopa County is, just briefly. Maricopa County is a a civil matter, paternity issue. Involving, I believe, someone from The Bachelor. Hmm. Hmm. Should we? Should we be? Should we go out there and be and be the pool camera? Yes. Uh, it's the Clayton Eckerd case. Uh, it's a crazy case. It's a crazy case. Um. It. It looks like. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I'm ready to say yes. I want to be, I want to be pool on it. It's a, it's a long way away. Is the only thing. It's it's way out in Maricopa County. Okay, let's do some thinking. Let me let me see if uh, Megan Fox is covering. She's been following that. She has. Um, <laughs> it's a bachelor case. Let's go. <laughs> Says Anova. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Okay, let's uh, let's briefly let's recap where we are today because we we just uh, we just abruptly entered the weekend with style and we have time to do it. I want you guys to have fun things to do as well, and I don't want to use up all your time. So let's uh, be respectful here today. Day what is it? Day seven. Day seven of trial. We had Sarah Zachary still on the stand. Cross examination, pretty good. Some impeachment. Uh, she was very hesitant to answer. She qualified her responses. The the one that stood out to me was when uh, when she was asked, "Did Seth Kenny?" Uh, tell you not to talk to anybody about this, and and she's like, uh, talk to who? 
and then and then they're like uh anyone and they're like about about what and they're like anything oh um no that that was that was very very telling but that that was just a an idea of, of how that went uh that was really good we had joel Sue's on the stand oh my goodness uh that was that was heartbreaking just uh, hearing him and, and hearing the emotion and all that very relaxed in court though he's very talkative he brought up the tax incentive he's like yeah we went to new mexico for the tax cut um and that was good he described everything with the rose-colored glasses and um and that was good did not say favor one side over the other i love 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 witnesses that can do this and that it, because they're just believable and and it, it just it's it's great i love it so i think the jury liked him as well emory clay emory chacron uh the hotel desk clerk who uh apparently uh hannah needed help with the bags up to the room a lot we didn't get into that a little bit he uh maybe was thinking it was something it wasn't and got rebuffed and eventually got ghosted on the the text messages uh poor boy poor boy uh wyatt mortensen you guys know wyatt he was the uh the, the wrangler the marble man wrangler guy and uh let's see miss schaefer the medic was on and then we ended with mamie uh mamie elizabeth mitchell who's the substitute teacher and used to be a hollywood script supervisor a uh, great testimony from all of them a lot of people one two three four five six people on the stand today that was a, a busy day and it, it was it was great so we are ready for next week next week it ends next week next week is the seventh next week's the eighth the week from today the jury should have a verdict and possibly even a week from yesterday the jury may have a verdict so that's going to be that's going to be exciting we have a probably i'd say two to three days max maximum of defense testimony so i i, I just i don't and i don't see hannah going on the stand i just i'm still i'm still sticking to that all right, uh, we were going to go and, and jump straight to uh, to Ian's live stream. He was not. He's going to start at seven thirty tonight. Is Friday, so it's uh, Friday night frenzy. Uh, if, you, if you're a follower of Rob on Law and Lumber, uh, he, he's uh, he basically recaps the week in uh, in a wild way with uh, usually some good friends and, and everything. And that's wonderful. So uh, that's going to happen after Ian's show tonight. I'm not sure if anything else is going right now. Let me. Let me check to see if there's anything I can patch you to. There are some great content creators out there that are that are putting together some good stuff and live right now. I, I think even let's see what we've got. Uh, Broken Baker, he's talking about potential next cases for next week. Um, Uncivil Law is talking about, well, let me see if he's still live. Just one second. Refresh. Okay, hang on, guys. Oh, okay, on civil law. Okay, Danny, Danny on direct is talking, is reviewing the rest trial. That might be fun to raid Danny. Uh, have you guys ever raided Danny before? Danny's, uh, does, Danny's out in Utah. She's going to be following the Corey Richens trial. Um, when we're, we're planning on being out there as well. Let's see if we can uh, pop in and say hi to Danny on this one because she's talking about the Hannah Gutierrez trial on day seven. She's reviewing that. So we'll we'll go there after it raids. And uh, I've never raided her before, I don't think. So uh, um, it, it's a different, uh, obviously, just because I, I send you to them. It's not, I'm not saying that they're going to be exactly like I am here. And I would not expect that. I'm not asking them to do that. Um, so if it's not your cup of tea, that's all right. That's all right, but I'd, I'd appreciate it if you just hit the like button when you land there, just out of respect and, and as a thank you for what they do, uh, because we have some great, great people out in the land of LawTube. So. And Danny is one of them. Uh, let's see. We need, need some music. There we go. She's an attorney. She's great. Uh, she was there. Um, wasn't she there for uh, um, Gwyneth Paltrow? She was there in Gwyneth Paltrow. She was in the courtroom, I think, on that one. Uh, which was cool. Danny's cool. All right, when you go there, uh, just say hi and, uh, and and be good, as we expect. We're watching Treehouse Trial, right? Uh, we need. I think he's got a hearing next week, right? The Treehouse Trial hearing is next week. I'm not sure if he's going to go to court yet. I need somebody to do some digging for me. I have not been following that very closely. I haven't heard from Tucker or from his wife. Uh, please let me know how that goes. 
All right. Have a great weekend. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Tonight, when you go home, please hug the people you love. Smile at someone. Make their day just a little bit better. And please stay safe till we go live again. It will be Monday morning unless something crazy happens. We might have a, a weird live stream maybe tomorrow or something. Uh, that's it's never good news because that means if bad news happens, we go live. That's what it is. Amber, I will watch for the details. I might talk, uh, talk to you on the uh, chat here directly here briefly. Thank you all. Thank you to the amazing mods who help uh, keep things happy here. You guys, this is the best place to watch true crime, and it is because of you. I think I already did my stay safe thing. Um, love y'all. It's been fun. It's been a fantastic week. Welcome to March. Welcome to March. Uh, this is my birth month. Party. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yay. All right, uh, be good, everybody. I'm going to go on a date with my girlfriend. My wife is my girlfriend, uh, but she's still my girlfriend. Thank you all. Uh, have a good weekend and uh, send pictures. I, I need to see those pictures of the Jeeps with the ducks. I want to see them on the burner phone by Monday. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you. Bye. The zombie apocalypse may be upon us.